LEGO Star Wars fans have been wanting a collectible minifigure series for a long time. Ever since LEGO brought out collectible minifigures in the summer of 2010, the question had always been a matter of when for LEGO Star Wars' turn. But year after year of LEGO's most popular theme not getting a CMF series, excuses started to be made, suggesting that LEGO just aren't able to produce a LEGO Star Wars CMF because of licensing issues, or that there's simply a lack of demand for it. So in this video we're going to explore those excuses and come to the true reason why LEGO will not make a LEGO Star Wars CMF and the reason is actually a lot simpler than you may think. But first let's go over what LEGO's collectible minifigures are and their business model behind that. So LEGO's collectible minifigures or as most commonly known as CMFs is a series of select detailed minifigures most commonly for a particular theme or genre. This allows collectors to attain more detailed versions of their favourite characters from movies and TV shows without spending the sum of money required to buy a full on LEGO set. These are the reasons why collectible minifigures are sought after products amongst LEGO fans generating large sales and that's why LEGO still produce them. Now the main argument people go to when people ask why LEGO won't make a Star Wars collectible minifigure series is licensing. And you may think, well, LEGO have the right to produce Star Wars products with a licensing agreement with Disney. And yes, while that is true, the specific argument made is that LEGO don't have the right to produce Star Wars action figures and that Hasbro has the exclusive rights to that. So then the conversation that naturally transpires is are minifigures classed as action figures? And um, the answer is no. There have been numerous occasions in LEGO's past where they've sold Star Wars minifigures on their own, such as the Force Awakens variant of C-3PO in a separate poly bag and also the Chrome Stormtrooper back in the day. And the counter you'll hear to this is that why do then LEGO sell a form of collectible minifigure series for Star Wars in foil packs attached to magazines, LEGO magazines in Europe? Surely they're just selling the collectible minifigures alongside the magazine for technical reasons, right? They're selling a LEGO magazine which comes with a free gift LEGO collectible minifigure. You're not directly buying that foil pack. Now, that is a big assumption and not a correct one. If LEGO were truly trying to sell a Star Wars collectible minifigure series via a magazine for technical reasons, then how come none of these minifigures are exclusive? Every single CMF ever made is a limited edition exclusive minifigure. That's literally how they're branded and promoted. Whereas the minifigures we see in the European foil packs are redistributed figures that have already been made that are currently in production in recent LEGO sets. What LEGO are doing here is just getting rid of their leftover stock. These minifigures help them sell the magazines better and then they don't have to write off their leftover stock as a loss. It just makes sense on their part. So what's the real reason why LEGO won't make a collectible minifigure series for their best selling theme? Well, money. Why would LEGO make a CMF line for Star Wars? Ask yourself. And you may think, no, they should make it because they'd make a killing out of it that makes so much money. And while I don't deny that, it's nowhere near the amount of money they'd make by continuing to not make one. I'll explain why after I tell you about a new product from our sponsor, FlexiSpot. The C7 Air is a premium office chair, which I've been using now for quite a while. And I have to say that it's my favorite office chair that I've used so far. It has plenty of features which allow you to maximize your comfort, such as an adjustable headrest, support cushions, armrests, and adjustable seat height and depth. It's also made of high quality breathable material, which is super durable. And if you have any problems and you don't have to worry as the chair includes a multi-year warranty. And the best part is right now there's a sale for the C7 Air, so you can pick it up for a hundred pounds off. I'll leave a link to Flexisbox C7 Air office chair in the description down below and with that let's get back to the video. This year was the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars and to celebrate LEGO gave us a series of collectible minifigures across a range of LEGO Star Wars sets. Ranging from more affordable sets like the boarding on Natantive which came with an exclusive fives minifigure to expensive sets like the upcoming LEGO Star Destroyer featuring an awesome Cal Kestis. The 25th anniversary minifigures we've seen so far such as Darth Malak, Saw Gerrera and Carl Kestis would make sense to be placed in a collectible minifigure series because they're not in any current or relevant Star Wars media at the moment. And because of that, 
it would ordinarily be difficult for LEGO to include these sorts of characters in the minifigure lineups of typical LEGO Star Wars sets. So why have LEGO done exactly that with these minifigures? The simple answer to that is that the extra sales of the full set these collectible minifigures will generate when directly placed into these LEGO Star Wars sets outweighs the profits that LEGO would make selling these collectible minifigures individually. Doing the maths on this, the current price of a collectible minifigure is $5. Now to be safe, let's just assume that LEGO would increase the price of the CMFs to $6 because they know they can just get away with charging that for LEGO Star Wars. Now the cost of producing these minifigures at this level of detail isn't as cheap as you might think. I have decent knowledge when it comes to pad printing, which is the technique LEGO used to produce their minifigures, and even at a large quantity, it's not cheap. But I'm gonna play it very safe and say that they'll be able to produce these minifigures boxed in packaging and sent out to the retail stores all around the world for just $1 a piece. Now, I promise it costs more than that, but I'm just being as generous as I can here on the CMF side. That gives us an estimated profit margin of $5 per unit, and that's at a maximum. For comparison, let's take a look at this 2024 LEGO Star Wars set, which is one of the first to include the 25th anniversary minifigures. That being Darth Malak, this set retails for $100. With a research, development and material cost reported to take up to about 30-40% to 40 of the set's retail price, it's safe to say that LEGO stand to make at least $50 from their $100 LEGO sets. That's at least 10 times the profit of a CMF. Now just think how many more sales of this set have been made just for having that minifigure alone. I'll let you into a little secret. It's a lot. Looking at Amazon which displays their sales figures, we can see that the R2-D2 set is actually one of the best selling LEGO Star Wars sets on all of Amazon, selling over a thousand copies per month. Compare that to the UCS R2-D2 set, which is still on shelves and is arguably better, is selling 10 times worse than the R2-D2 which includes the exclusive Darth Malak minifigure. Now how much of that sales difference is due to the fact that the UCS version is more expensive, that's definitely a contributing factor, but the main factor for sure would definitely be that exclusive Darth Malak minifigure. That hunch is also reinforced by the fact that the other best selling LEGO Star Wars set on Amazon is Boarding the Tantive. You know, the one that has a 25th anniversary minifigure that also has over a thousand sales per month. I in fact purchased both of these sets just to sell on the 25th anniversary minifigures because their demand was just so high. I purchased the Boarding the Tantive set for £45 on sale, so £5 off, and sold the Fives minifigure for £29 on eBay, giving me over 500 pieces and 6 minifigures for £16. With the R2-D2 set, I purchased that on sale for £71, and sold the Darth Malak minifigure for £47, giving me 1,050 pieces for £24. The fact that people are willing to spend the majority of the set cost on just the 25th anniversary LEGO Star Wars minifigure really shows how much the demand for these sorts of minifigures are carrying the sales of these sets to the top of the charts. The conclusion then is an ironic one. Why don't LEGO make a Star Wars CMF? Well, the demand is just too high. Now, people will argue in the comment section if it's right or wrong how LEGO are handling this. On one hand, you could argue that LEGO as a for-profit company has every right to package their products in a system which generates them the most revenue, and that's just capitalism working out by design. On the other hand, you could argue that LEGO are actually extorting their customers by placing their collectible minifigures behind higher paywalls, being full price sets, rather than selling them individually. Now, I'm not here to pick a side on that debate, I'm just here to inform people on a misconception that I think is out there in the LEGO community. I'll let you lot figure out the moral side of things in the comment section below. Thank you to Brighter Switch Bricks for being a tier 3 member of the channel, and with that, I'll be seeing you.